Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator, and today I am in the Diamond DA20 by Real Sim Gear. Now, Real Sim Gear has been a vendor of flight sim hardware, and, I, and to my knowledge, I think this is actually the first. Let me see if I can get another view so I can manipulate the cursor faster. I think this is their, uh, that's not going to work, their first foray into, there we go, into making a aircraft for Microsoft, not Microsoft Flight Sim, making a aircraft, period. Uh, so, and they chose the Diamond DA-20. So, looks like they are decided to Move in on Aerobass domain. Not really. Anyway, so the plan today is to, to check out this airplane and to take it from, let's see, we will take it from Raleigh, Durham, which is where I'm at, to Burlington, which is about 35 nautical miles uh, to the west. So let's, um, let's not... Uh, I do this thing and get started. So that was a, see what I did there. That was a different way of saying without further ado. <laughs> anyway, uh, but before we do that, it's always a but, right? Uh, we all got those. All right. So before we do that, let's just take a look at the modeling. Um, now, let's look at this. Look at that. Imp that impronage that that t tail there and look at this detail in the way they they model the hinges and stuff let's see uh just move the ro oh man check that out talk about detail um and not a speck of dirt on it so uh this is either a brand brand new aircraft or um, the owner, which would be me, uh, I did buy it, keep it well, keep it covered and washed. So I'm going to go for the latter. I just like to take care of my aircraft. Um, okay, so yeah. Um, so let's um, see if we can get down and look at the wheel pants. Uh, I can see... Um, the access holes and um, the screws and let's see jet a power so we see that this guy runs on jet a which is not the stuff that you would be used to putting into an airplane this size uh, you most airplanes this size run on on um, 100 low lead. Um, wow! Look at look at the screw here. Um, I can actually put a screwdriver in that and turn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, it is modeled to a very high degree, I would say. And sorry, I'm not any better with manipulating this thing on the outside. I generally do all my flying from the cockpit. And I'm not one that really, really get in the fine details of um of the aircraft being modeled, but when a developer go the extra mile, I do like to acknowledge that. And and this developer did look at those screws. Um yeah. yeah, and is that a heart cell? No, this is this is not a heart cell propeller, is it? Um, I don't think so. Generally, heart cell would say heart cell. Well, what happened here? What did I click on? Um, okay, that's just the uh, reflection popped in. Looks like. Um, yeah. 
and so I could see the air filter there inside the uh, air inlet and this air filter inside that air inlet yep nice and oh I see what happened I put a cover on it somehow um, I don't know what I clicked to put that cover on but uh, let's get it off um, Let's see, the only way, I, apparently there are some hot keys that I can manipulate this stuff with, but I don't know them by heart. So uh, let's go to main menu and turn off the chocks, the cones, the cabin cover. Uh, since I'm here, uh, let's see if I can get out with, with this. Um, yeah, I can. All right, so... I can get out with this. In fact, I think I can resize this. Uh, let me leave it big so that you can see it too. Um, yeah, so anyway, I was admiring the the, the prop, the three-bladed prop, and I was trying to read the, the uh, emblem on it. And it says fluke. Flu plaque, flug plaques. Um, maybe that's some different language, but I can see the model number of the prop. So you know, pretty cool, pretty pretty detailed model in there. Uh, let's see. Um, now I do have enabled persistent systems check, and if I run down the battery, then they did give us a way to recharge them. I've, I've there is one aircraft that I fly that if I run the battery down, which I have, the only way to recharge it is to restart it. So this recharge battery button is very important in my opinion. Okay, so I, I get, um, I get, let's see what else do we get. Um, let me move some stuff around. All right, so I see the pedo tube uh the static port tube i believe that is let's see uh static cover yep uh pedo cover yep so pedo cover is on static cover is on it's got the little stringles the little green stringles hanging down uh wing tip covers um cool tie downs um one thing i do want to show you about this aircraft is it's got two inlet covers um, you see inlet cover and inlet cover coal now I can't click both of these at the same time but in the summertime or when they are in warm climates then you know if you're tying it down overnight you just want to keep birds and bees out of it um, so so yeah um, or bats <laughs> the, bee, the three bees the birds bees and bats i uh, just made that up anyway um but in the winter time you know it it you you don't want frost to build up on the on it uh to you know you want to a little bit more something a little bit more substantial so you can cover this whole thing especially you know maybe you maybe there's a a eighth a dust and a snow in the forecast or something um but yeah um so you can see the difference between the two all right so let's get the um the stall the stall cover or the static they call it stall cover i call it static port cover um off the pedo cover and let's get these wing tip covers off all right good deal good deal and now since we're out here let's move this over here and we can actually take a really good peek on the inside to see the engine of this bad boy let's see let's see uh, if i can manipulate the mouse so that i can get a good close-up look maybe i can go I want to 
to go up and look down and not sure how to accomplish that. Ah, shucks. Um, let's see. Let's get back out. And there we go. Let's see. That's kind of what I wanted to do. And that should go over this way. Yeah. So, so yeah, if I, I have very little idea what I'm actually looking at. Um, but I do know that, um, let's see, it's piston driven. Um, so, so yeah, um, I know, do know that this is the, the cover, um, in a car, I would call this the vowel cover. I'm not sure what it's called here, but, um, but yeah, also, uh, this guy has some of the CL650 type features like, and I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but I think it's worth showing it to you. Um, let's see, like I can look at um, the electrical system um, and I can pop out the fuel system um, and I can pop out the the cooling system so I can actually see how these how they how these systems interact with the engine when the engine is in use so you know that's pretty cool let's close these up for the time being um, I hope I can remember to circle back to them all right so let's get the column back on and let's get this flight started um, but another but, right? So, but before we do that, let's take a look at the modeling on the inside, right? Uh, that's worth look, looking at. So, um, I think they did a really good job in modeling this this bad boy here. Let's see. So, you know, the textures are done to an extremely and and it's. Well, the textures are done extremely well. Let's see, got an operable window here. And we are in Raleigh, Durham, and it's, it is in the 80s today. So, so yeah, let's just pop these back open and get us a little airflow. Um, let's see, now, I wonder if the door's open. Um, uh, let's see. So some of this stuff we're discovering together, and I see a handle here. This is clickable. I don't know if the door is open. You know, one of the things that I realize helps when I'm discovering a new plane is to, to do this. Um, I want to go to view and show click regions. There we go. So this would give me ideas of what is clickable, what is modeled to do stuff. So, so yeah, let's see. Now this is modeled here in the back to do something. Um, having a clue what, uh, let's see. And uh, let's see, let's just look around and see where click regions are so I can see that the the shades are modeled. Uh, look at the texture on the ceiling. Isn't that, isn't that fantastic, guys? That's what I'm talking about. You know, I like I said, I don't go crazy over this kind of stuff, but I think that's phenomenal. Let's see, so I can move this guy around and looks like I can move it around here, um, and I imagine this might be an off and on button. All right, so diamond alcohol. Oh man, look at the texture on that seat. Doesn't that look real? Uh, those little holes give you some breathing room, keep the sweat down, and of course the trim, the fuel. Um, so what is this guy here? I'm not sure what that is doing. Let's see. 
Uh, let's see if we can back out to that a little bit better. Okay, let's see. So we got something down here that I didn't realize that we even had. Okay, so this looks like ready. Okay, radio. And it looks like this this cover may be ah. That's how you turn the noise counseling headset on. You know, I looked for that and I couldn't find it. That's why it's Good thing to start to start this click spot region and just discover stuff. Incidentally, I could not find a any documentation from real sim gear on this aircraft. Fortunately, I've got just about every diamond that Aerobass has made, so I am familiar to a great extent with the diamond aircraft. And the, since the engines are fully faded, then starting it is just as easy as starting my car outside. Uh, let's see. So, so yeah, now I got these click spots here. Um, uh, something's okay. So that manipulates this light. Um, and I think I'm outside the cabin here so I need to look up at it this way yeah so that this light is manipulable <laughs> is that a word all right so let's go back here and this oh okay let's see I'm able to open that open that now okay so so right now with this, all I can do is open it. Now, is there a way to push this on open? If there is, I don't see it. Okay, so I don't want to get bogged down on the stuff. But yeah, let's see. Now, I am going to pop out right quickly and just see if I see a click spot out here to open up anything. All right, so I see that. There we go. So yeah, I can open that up. And I guess this one opens too. Um, uh, maybe it doesn't. Ah, even wow look at that even the I can even lock it and unlock it right now it's unlocked let's see if I can move this over a little better and I tell you I enjoy discovering new aircraft let's see so and discovering how stuff work on them. So it says, it says pour this, which I've done, and pour that. Okay, it's poured. And then looks like it raises from the back. All right, so, so there we go. How about that, guys? How you like them apples? All right. I, I like them. All right, Chucks. Okay. And let's see. So I see click stuff. Okay, so now I see how I got the um, the calling on when I click something. That there are actually click spots out here that I didn't know about um, that I can hardly see. But I can put stuff on just by walking around and doing a walk around. All right, cool, cool beans. Good to know. Good to know. All right. And let's uh, let's close these doors back. Uh, well, let's see. Let's load our passengers first. 
Um, so here's a good time to pull up the load manager while my doors are open. So, uh, me, 160, you, 200. Uh, I don't know how much you weigh, but I imagine you weigh somewhere between 175 and 225. So we'll give you 200. And let's see, let's take a passenger and put her in the back. Oh, got a black girl. That's pretty cool. Uh, black guy. Um, looks like maybe judging from well, he's got a mustache, so so I would think he's a guy. Um, I almost thought I saw some breasts there. All right, so let's give him some weight, and we're getting him one seven one eighty. Yeah, average size guy. All right, and um. And yeah, so we'll we'll do four, three passengers, and we'll put a lot of um, fuel in the in the. Um, let's see, we got a half a tank, nine and a half, nine point seven gallons of fuel. We'll raise the left fuel to ten and a half, and I guess. Guess actually, let's put let's raise the left to eleven point three. All right, so we're still in our envelope. Now, <laughs> I was playing around with this, and I accidentally I was just well I didn't accidentally I was literally playing around with it. So let me just turn my click spots off right quick. Uh, show click regions. Now, I'll show you something that that uh, I got a good little laugh out of. So I said, well, you know, what would happen if I put, if I just put um, a bunch of weight in the back of the plane and boom. <laughs> oh, man. That is so funny, right? <laughs> but this is a light aircraft, and you can see how important it is to stay in the window. Can you imagine trying to fly this guy with with it being this far out of the out of the envelope? So then I said, "Well, all right, let me get him back in the um, back in the um, the ah." Yeah, so a different person. It is a girl. How about that? I guess it depends on how much weight you put on them. Oh. Ah. Anyway, um, I decided let me get them back in the front. <laughs> it's cool how the, how the passengers change up. Um, and I was like, oh, man, I can't, can't figure out how to get the nose of this thing back down. So, But it dawned on me that all I gotta do is just put some weight in the front and take this weight out. There we go. So you you see how sensitive this guy is to weight. That's why it's important to do a proper weight and balance when you're flying these aircraft. Uh, let's see, you were 200 and had him at. Um, at 180. All right, that's close enough. And a few pounds of cargo. Um, and half cargo. Yep. So I'm still in my in my envelope. I would imagine that up in here. And if I draw an imaginary line, ooh. An imaginary line down here, I would imagine that would be more toward the utility range of the of the envelope. Okay, so for you guys across the pond, um, you know, there's the metric units, and um, and of course I am in the empirical thing. One thing that I see 
is is let's see um, well I was thinking about um, inches of mercury and Q and H um, but we'll get to that okay so let's um, move along here and got that done all right so it's just fun to go over this stuff right all right so uh load manager we can pop that out in fact um i don't have to bring the menu back up just that upper left hand corner uh there's a click spot to kill stuff all right so let's close up things um that ain't the way you close i want to open that back up so i don't break the handle when i close it up and i remember it was at the back Okay, and there we go. And of course, I'm not tying it down for the night, so I don't have to lock it. But it, but it's cool that it has. I can lock. You know, when I get out of the plane, I can lock these things, and each one has its own lock. All right, so that should this one should be in the back too. I would imagine I uh, maybe it's in the well, yeah. Okay, and I tell you what, on this one, oh, let's we'll see if we can't figure out how to close it from the. Uh, I dropped a sheet of paper. All right, make sure that's not a check. Nope, no check. Okay. Actually, I can fold this up. <clears throat> okay, so um, so what was that? Yeah, we was gonna close the um, this guy from the inside. So I imagine that we would grab it here, and there we go. So yeah, I'm learning, guys. So now I know that to open it, then I want to grab it about right there. So. So, yeah, cool. Um, fantastic what our real sim gear, I want to call them RGS, uh, uh, RSG, I mean. Um, all right, so let's see. Let's make sure this guy's locked. There we go. And all right, so with that said, we could go ahead and get this guy running so that we can get out of this heat all right and like i said starting this guy is almost as easy as starting my car uh so I'll, all i need to do is make sure that my fuel is on normal and check this guy um brake is set okay and i'm just gonna do a quick run through uh, instrument panel lights uh, are off flood lights are off uh, let's turn our position light on so when I open, turn that key that light will come on and um, and actually I'm going to turn the strobes on too uh, so when I turn the key um, people can see that I'm about to start up in fact yeah, I'm just leaving both on. All right. And let's see. Come on down here and check. Turn master on. Good deal. And um, let's see. Now, this essential bus, I think, is like, well, I was about to say, I think it's like an emergency system, but without the key, it doesn't work. Um uh, without yeah, without the starter button being on. All right, the breakers are modeled, so it's important that I take a a good look at them. In fact, I could pop those out. Um, circuit breakers, so I can pop them out and look here. And so yeah, uh, cool. Just want to show you that. And um, what else do we have here? Okay, brakes are set. All right, so let's get this guy started. 
grab the key. And the key switch does work with the Alpha, the Honeycomb Alpha. Scratch that. <laughs> it does not work with the Honeycomb Alpha. Not out the box. Um, maybe with some manipulation, I can get it to work. All right. So right now, I just want to turn it on um, because the key does control my electrical master. All right. And the engine master is on. Okay. So, so with that said, I've got my master on. And now I can brighten this guy up, right? Because I want to be able to see it. I want you to be able to see it. All right. And um, my position and strobe light should be illuminated now. I don't know if I can see the strobe site from the from the inside, certainly from the outside. There we go. And go ahead and hit this guy. And I want to put in my little flight plan. Like I said, we're not going very far. Um, we're going to do a direct flight to Burlington, uh, which is K by or Kilo Bravo Uniform Yankee. And so let's get Kilo here. Bravo Uniform. And Yankee. All right. Good deal. I'm happy, happy. Let's see. Okay, so let's enter that. And we got a magenta line here, and we are good to go. All right, so we got our flight plan set. And uh, with this fully faded engine, the, the computer takes care of everything. So basically, all I have to do is turn the key. Um, I do like to monitor my ore temp my ore pressure upon starting and um, yeah so so let's make that happen um, let's see get out here and clear left clear right clear prop And just like that, we are started. Oil pressure has come up and it's in the green. At the temperature outside, it won't take the ore temperature line to come up. And I've got um, positive volts and um, positive amps plus nine. And the gearbox temperature is coming up. Coolant is, um, I think that says it's 65 degrees. Uh, so yeah, and fuel. Let's just go wrong button. Take a look at fuel right quick. Uh, so I got fuel flow, and let's just check the fuel flow. So what I'm seeing, I didn't see the fuel flow gallons per hour change. I imagine it, it there we go. Um, and that makes sense. Okay. Uh, this ESS bus, I'm not sure how that's used, but I do know if I turn it on, then, well, ESS is the Essential Systems bus, and I guess if something was going on and I needed just the Essential Systems, then I could 
do that and uh, only what's essential is running I'm like again I'm not sure how that how that works but let's uh, let's get our MD MFD started back up okay and we're good all right so let's go back out here and hit back and of course we've got our map and we've I don't know if we if the weather radar works or not um, but um, just like the the Laminar uh, X1000 I've got uh, traffic topology terrain airways and next ride all right, so it's not new there, uh, but this is, from what I understand, uh, they have uh, modified it. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and turn our avionics master on, and now I did a flight and I couldn't. And I had the avionics master off, and I didn't realize that I needed to turn it on. And I was like, well, how did I get COM2 to work? So, um, you know, I got this old saying that that if I keep messing around with it, more will be revealed. All right. So this end number is one that I chose that I put in myself. Um, and it does have an end number generator. Uh, let's see, the, the, the tail number, uh, main menu, where's that generator at? Um, probably look right at it. Yeah, there it is, tail number. So, yeah, if I wanted to change it to, say, 855 Delta Papa then it's just a matter of setting it and give it a minute and boom it's set just that quick um, the in my case it reloaded the system file automatically I think it did all right so now if I pop outside I even got my tail number on the fuselage so I thought that's pretty cool um, she was. I don't remember the tail number I just had. So Delta Papa. I guess I just leave it here. I think I may have had Delta Tango, but we just go with Delta Papa. All right. Uh, I think Delta Alpha is a real world Delta tail number tail number for a real world uh, 855 Delta Alpha. I think it's a real world tail number for a, a uh, diamond DA20. All right. So let's uh, let's get our aiders here and. I'm using active sky, so I'm going to use the active sky frequency. Kilo Romeo Delta Uniform Airport Information Echo 1751 Sulu Weather Wind Calm Visibility 8 Sky Condition 6000 Scattered Temperature 31 U.14 Altimeter 2992 Advice on Initial Contact Here Information Echo Got Echo I need to get the winds again so. Kilo Romeo Delta Uniform Airport Information Echo 1751 Sulu Weather Wind Calm, visibility 8, sky condition 6, thousand, scattered temperature 3, 1, U.14, altimeter 2, 9, 9, 2, advice on initial contact. Okay, so the, the barometer is 2, 9, 9, 2, which is perfectly standard. So this is a good time to show you guys this here um so yeah so i've got the um the at the steam gauges um as a backup as a 
system backup system, but I can also change it to the the MD302, and uh, that didn't change it. I just popped it out, which I didn't mean to do. I didn't even know that was going to happen. Um, but it is just a pop-out window. So I guess where I need to go is um, here, main menu. And then I could do um, change it to the MD302 here. All right, so 299 or um, 2. And, and if right now it's in borrow, if I needed to be in um, Q and H, then I could check this guy out. And now I'm seeing the barometer in Q and H. So that's pretty cool. I actually prefer having the steam gauges. And man, that's, uh, sorry guys, didn't mean for that to happen. Let's see. I need to set up a few more keys on my so I can get to this a lot quicker. But it's set at 2992. Um, and again, if I needed this to be in um, Q and H, then if I check that off, oh, well, actually. For the steam gauge, I got Q and H on the um, left side and barometers on the right side, so I'm covered. All right, and I mentioned the, the charge batteries um, earlier. All right, so I think we've got everything covered. Got a flight plan in, and now all we need to do is dial in our frequencies. So. Actually, I got them here, but for some reason, on the GA side of the airport, as much as I'm here, I can't remember which whether um, this the GA side or the the E side uses 121.9 or 121.7. So uh, give me a moment and I'll look. Okay, so on the east side, then I'm going to use 121.9. All right, so now I, I do know that. Uh, what am I trying to say? Let's see. I do know that ground, I mean, uh, tower is 127.45. So I am going to pop this to tower, change this guy to 121.9, and pop it in, and I'm good. All right. So I can pop this down, and, and I'm good. All right. So I don't really need this. So I am I'm gonna just close it up like so. And I'm getting about twenty about twenty one twenty three on my frame rates. And that's just chatter in the background, ATC chatter. Um I'm not on a ATC network, so I'm kinda gonna fake it. All right, so what we'll do is we'll call, we would have had to talk to clearance delivery and they would have given us a squat code. And so uh, let's turn that on altitude reporting and put in a squat code of three, two, four, three. Uh, making this up and I hit the wrong buttons three two four three all right and 
and yeah, so that's uh, that's that. All right. And let's see what warnings we got. I uh, don't see any warnings. Don't see any ca oh, the, the caution is pedo heat. Um, and advisories. Um, yeah, alerts. Uh, don't see any alerts popping up. Oh, I do. Uh, inside uh, airspace. All right. And that takes care of that. So, so I do need to pop on my pedo heat. And that should be that. And, and my alerts are cleared. All right. And white is right, so um, blue is true, red is scared. All right, and let's get rid of this guy. And I wish I could turn that up, make that a little bit brighter, but it is what it is. All right, so let's get the taxi on, and winds will come. RD uses runway five when winds will come. And I do see somebody looks like they're taxiing out. So let's uh, release our brakes and get going here. And we, yeah, it looks like this guy's going to two, three. And I see somebody on final. So, so since I'm using traffic global, kind of having to look at, let's see if, make sure he's taxiing out. He could be taxiing in. No, he's taxiing in, so he have already landed and he's just going to park. All right, so let's see if I can see anybody landing, let's see what runway they are on, now if I can see anybody on approach. And I don't, don't, but like I said, when winds will come, generally traffic global, uh, not traffic global, but uh, runway fives are in use. So let's get these ones closed here. Sure, I'll just win though us. And I'll leave mine open. Chances are I get to my whole short line and forget the forget to close it and make the whole flight with it open. Let's hope I don't do that. Okay, so this uses differential braking. So I'm having to tap the brakes to guide to guide this guy or uh, either ride the brake ride or brake. And we are gonna go up to five. Um, so stop here oh this breaks or something else okay I'm clear make sure it's not coming not coming I'm good to go right it is hard to steer without trying to, to treat this as if it's got a nose wheel. See something, see moving traffic there. And the noise that we're hearing, all right, let me yield to this traffic. And I bet he want to turn right in front of me. I 
I knew it. So, this is the problem with AI traffic. I got collisions turned off, so we won't have any damage. But, um, but there is no way the the guy who developed Traffic Global, his name is Jim Kerr, and he got uh, constricted. <laughs> Not a bad choice of word, but. He, he works for X-Plane now as the ATC guy. So I don't think he put, he's putting a lot of time into Traffic Global anymore, which means that he's not trying to uh, make it smarter. Okay, so this, this road noise is rough. So let me stop here and let me do this let's see that i remember seeing the headphones let's see if that helps um, let's see let's look at it see if there's a volume okay so not, um, well, i can turn that up Yeah, let's see if that if that has any any um, if that helps that road noise. And would you believe I think the sim just crashed? So let's just pause it and try to get back to the same point. So I have um, restarted the sim. You know, that's one of the things that uh, that I have to deal with running all these plugins that I run in X Plane 12, and I do have my share of them. Anyways, um, hopefully, at some point, the sim will become a little bit more stable. Anyway, so I'm sitting in the air in the on the, sitting at five right, make sure nothing's coming in because I'm just sitting here talking and I'm okay. And so let's get this guy, let's get this takeoff started and go ahead and release the brake. Incidentally, you can see that I got working tow brakes on this on this bad boy. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's. Release the brake and put in a notch of flaps. So we got uh, two notches take off and landing, of course, um, and then no notch. So, anyway, um, let's make this happen. The strobes and landing lights are on and give it full power. Still tapping the brakes till I can get rudder right authority. Alright. Got rudder right authority, airspeed's alive. I'm gonna rotate at uh, 65. 60, 65, 65, rotate. And we are airborne. RDU climbing out. A bit more right runner here. All right. 
trim. And let's get these flaps out. Let's see, we had um, 900 feet. Flaps up. Alright, got our flaps out. And at this point, the ATC will be vectoring us. So let's go ahead and have us vector us on a left downwind. Let's see if I can start this guy. Yeah, I got that still open running. Now I'm going to undo this, see if that I heard the changes. No, it's counseling. I don't actually hear any changes, so I think Real Sim Gear may have some work to do on that. going to level out at 3,000. That's going to be our cruise altitude. We're at 24 for 3,000 now. I think I want about 80% low. working on getting it trimmed out the way I want it. So I know you can't see what's going on with the trim, but I am playing with it, working with it. RDU down there. Uh, see, I knew I was going to do this. But I don't hear any change in the sound, and I should be hearing sound changes in the sound. So, um, so yeah, real sim gear. If you guys happen to see this video, then there are some things that you that you do need to work on. But. Otherwise, this is a fantastic aircraft. I see Alaskan Airlines coming in on final. And let me get rid of my labels. And I see it right here. So, like, they've had a gate change. One thing I do like about this aircraft is that she, oh man, I have blown all through my, um, my, um, well actually they didn't have a gate change, I done blown all through the path and, uh, 
and looking at somebody coming in for five. Five left. Now, I do have four flight. Let's see if I can bring up four flight. Not right now. So, in VFR flying, what you do is you find something on the horizon and you fly towards it, right? So, uh, so, I am going to point my nose at this little area here and fly towards it until I pick up my line here. And let's see if I pop four flight back open. Actually, yeah. Okay, four flight, four flight. There we go. Now the now the um, let's see the orange line on the four flight map is direct to Burlington and it's Burlington, North Carolina, not Burlington, Vermont. Uh, <laughs> which you probably never heard of Burlington, North Carolina. It's a really small place, uh, but um, but yeah. Alright, so make my turn on course. And, and get rid of my four flight map. And set our altitude to three thousand. And let's set nav to on. And let's engage autopilot. All right. So, that gives me the opportunity to to just look around some more. So the diamond DA twenty guys. Now, in in my opinion, the diamond DA twenty makes a fantastic commuter you know it, let's say um i'm at raleigh durham and let's say i've um i live i work in fedville which is roughly 120 miles i don't know how far fedville is away from here but when i drive it takes about two or three hours so um so anywhere that that might be a two or three hour drive uh, would 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 be a great use for this airplane to be able to fly there uh, as a commuter um, now, and it is IFR capable. So if the weather's not too bad, then I could pretty much rely on the aircraft being able to fly it in in pretty much any kind of weather. Um, of course. It's not ice. I can't fly it when it's icy. Uh, and another use for it 
and this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, is it makes a great trainer. Uh, the DA-20 is a, a flight school's dream and a flight student's dream because if I'm training in this and I'm taking my check ride in it, you know, I don't have to worry about managing a mixture. You know, I actually really don't have to manage almost anything. Of course, you know, I still have to do a run-up, which I didn't do. Well, I would have did, but when I spun back in, I decided to just spun in on the runway. Um, but I can actually do a mixture, a, um, a run-up by pressing the test button. Uh, incidentally, I tried it before on another flight and it didn't really work. So I'm not so sure that uh, that it's working. So that may be something else that Real Sim need to circle back on. Or maybe I just didn't do it right uh, for whatever reason. I only tried it once. Alright, let me check my fuel. Okay, so I'm burning fuel out of my left tank and I'm starting to create a little bit of an imbalance. So what I want to do is transfer fuel into my right from my right tank back to my left tank. I also need to watch it because the fuel transfers pretty pretty fast and if I'm not careful I could have a big imbalance. Uh, in fact, as you can see, it's almost lined up already. So another 60 seconds or so, and it ought to be pretty close to lined up. Um, but yeah, so that lines it up. And let me give it another 60 seconds to get little bit more out of that rank right tank into oh, I got traffic uh, into that left tank so let me turn my fuel transfer off and let's see the traffic look like it ought to be over here somewhere mm. don't see it But uh, that little black diamond that ran through there was traffic. So I have to keep an eye on that. And oil temp is okay in the green. Oil pressure is in the green. Coolant tip in the green. Let's check our gearbox. So we want to go to engine and. I believe um, that's up on the system here. And gearbox is in the green. Votes and uh, amps in the green. So, yeah, happy, happy. Oops, let me click that. All right. So, we should be getting fairly close to Burlington. I, the, uh, I do know that we passed Chapel Hill. That was an, an airport called Horace Williams that closed down not too long ago and looks like we're about halfway um, according to the iPad and you can see Horace Williams with the big X on the iPad but um, but yeah it looks like we are Roughly about 35 nautical miles uh, east of um, uh, Burlington. So let's see, I need to get the ADAS, uh, not ADAS, but um, weather, which is 135.32. So let's change this guy. So Let's change this guy to 3-2. And this can go to 135. Pop that in.
and turn on COM2. But I'm actually using That Delta wins a 29901. I mean, wins a calm. A Timber is 29901. Wins a calm. So that's what I needed. So let me. Yeah, so I got what I needed. And I can see the airport. The airport's in sight. Yep. Okay. So. Get rid of the iPad and uh, two four is at the top and six is at the bottom. We're gonna land on six, so I am going to take control. It's my airplane and I'm gonna start my descent here. Turn off the flight director. To the power back. So what I want to do is I want to cross the runway to the west and then come on, come in on a 45 degree angle. And I want to be at least six miles away from the airport when I cross. So that's the plan. So airport is here. And I meant to go. I said I was 30 something miles from the airport. That was misinformation. I'm doing a 600, not a 600 minute descent. So I'm going to rest that to about 500 feet per minute. And pattern for Burlington, the, the airport elevation is 600 feet. So I am, I want to get down to. 1600 feet when I enter the pattern. So I've got a plan for entering and landing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my landing light on. It's already on. Um, and even though this is faded, I'm going to just go through a glance gas. Okay, it's down here. Lights. Undercarriage. Fixed. Mixture. Not applicable. And uh, prop. Not a, well, and not, a, not, not applicable. Seat belts applicable. All right, so I'm in line with the airport now. I mean, with the runway. And so I can go ahead and make the call. Uh, let's see, 122.95, um, 97. Burlington traffic, Diamond 855 Delta Papa is 
eight miles to the west inbound on the 45 for left runway six full stop relative all right so let's uh go ahead and make that turn towards the airport let's see let's find the airport now in real life keeping the eye out i don't think would be this tough I love to be, I love the all this view I get out of this thing. Okay, that's the airport. Ah, oh, shucks. Ah, oh, shucks, look at the airport. I'm all up on top of it so I am gonna go ahead and make a downwind call and I'm at traffic pattern so I can go ahead and get trimmed out for that Burlington traffic Diamond 855 Delta Papa is on left downwind runway 06 Burlington. Okay. I'm in flaps range. Happy, happy. Okay, so I need to be on a head of about two four. Uh, maybe two six. What's the um, two four? Two fours feels like it's doesn't feel, quite feel like it's parallel. So I'm just using visual cues to stay parallel. Okay, I'm a beam. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my first notch of flaps. And Now normally I would look for 500 feet, but I climbed up a little bit higher than I should have, so I'm going to look for about 700 feet on my descent here. Alright, so let's see if I'm uh, 45, I'm just about 45, so just before I get to the water, I'm going to turn in okay so I'm good here Burlington traffic Diamond 855 Delta Papa is turning left base runway 06 Burlington okay Okay, so I'm on my base turn, and looks like I want to turn final about right up in here. Um, so, Burlington traffic. Diamond 855 Papa Delta Papa is turning short final for runway 06 for a stop. Burlington. Okay. 
and go ahead and pop in some more flaps. Bring it down and on in. Lined up here. She's a joy to fly. She really is. All right, power out and let's round out here. Butter. All right, play with them differential brakes. We are down. exit to the left and that's going to take us right to the FBO that we want. Perfect. And you can hear the, uh, the wheels on the runway. So, guys, this is a wonderful aircraft to fly, easy to handle. Um, it's probably more challenging taxiing than it is flying it. Burlington traffic, Diamond 855 Delta Papa is clear of runway 06, Burlington. All right. So, let's use FLTT to clean up here. L flaps. L lights. T trim. And T for transponder. Stand by, BFR. All right, good deal. And let's see, I got a warning light on. Having a clue what threw that warning, but whatever it is, must be resolved. So let's clear that out. Clear right, uh, left, I mean, my other left. <laughs> clear right, and let's, uh, let's park. So this um, FBO is unmarshaled. So I am just gonna find my own parking spot. Just where I don't block anybody in. Um, those King Arrows. Okay, so I think they can get out. Just a little bit more I should have parked maybe over there where where there are some markings but they can get the king arrows out and I don't intend anticipate being here that that long all right so let's um, get this guy shut down brakes are engaged and I'm going to work my way right to left. Flaps are up. Pedo heat can go off. Transfer fuel is off. Avionics master can go off. And 
eccentric bus, so I'm gonna turn that on. All right, uh, and I'm coming over here. Um, taxi light can come off, and instrument panel can go off, and master can go off, and that should shut down the engine. Good deal. And fuel was already off, and uh, ESS can go off, and key, which is the electric master, this should kill everything, can go off, and let's um, put this guy back. Okay. Um, since we're gonna get out and let's open this door, raise this guy. Find that click spot. There we go. And we can hop out. Okay, and turn around, and passenger is out, so come up here and close this guy back, and lock it, lock her up, lock this one, and lock this one. All right, guys, so that does it for this flight. Um, of course, I can go ahead and chalk up the tiles. Uh, let's see if I can come over here a little bit just so I can see the tiles, maybe even come down and should have a click spot somewhere around here. I don't know if the click spot is working in this view. Let's see. Let's, no, it's not working in this view. So I got a bad view for for using the click spots. So I changed views. And unfortunately, this view shows me the um, passengers. Of course, I can get them out with the load balance, but the pallet will still be in there. All right, so we'll do that. And we'll leave the covers off where we put these on. And maybe a wing, yeah, go ahead. All right, so that does it for, for, uh, oh, now the passengers are gone. Cool. Y'all come back now, dear.